Around half of the water supply in the world is based in groundwater. And here in Denmark, all the drinking water is actually coming from groundwater. And I think many people would like to think of this as being just water coming out of the soil ready to drink. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Um, there are a number of characteristics with the groundwater. It is typically anaerobic, and it often contains a range of compounds that we certainly don't want to drink. Therefore, we have to make a treatment. It's also often called a simple treatment uh, containing aeration and filtration. If we focus on the filtration, then that is uh, conducted in rapid sand filters, which could look like, like this. They are constructed in a way where we have some filter material, uh, typically uh, quartz sand, uh, different grains, uh, grain size down through the filter. The water is coming in in the top and going through the filter and going out. If we look at some of the compounds that are removed here, then there could be iron and manganese, which then are being oxidized, and the oxidized form then stays in the filter. It could also be compounds like uh, methane, ammonium, sulfides, or pesticides, and they are all oxidized uh, completely and then leave the, uh, the filter with the water. Now, the filter here may be a filter, but it's not only a sieve. It also is a biological reactor. A lot of these processes are actually conducted by microorganisms. One of these processes is nitrification. That is the oxidation of ammonia by bacteria. That could be ammonia oxidizing bacteria, ammonia oxidizing archaea, oxidizing the ammonia into nitrite. And then we have uh, nitrite oxidizing bacteria, which is oxidizing the nitrite into nitrate. Now, why are we interested in this process? Well, first of all, as you can see, there's a lot of oxygen involved in this process, and we don't want that process to occur outside the waterworks. We don't want that to occur in the distribution system and during storage, where the water then actually may lose oxygen. We are also important, it is also important that the oxidation is complete, so we don't have accumulation of nitrite, because nitrite is actually toxic, and you can see that reflected by the guideline values uh, for the different compounds here. And then thirdly, we also know that a number of waterworks actually are not really working well on this process here. They can be optimized. Now, I claim that this was a biological reactor, the rapid sand filters, and uh, you could ask, are there a lot of bacteria, or there are bacteria at all in these filters? And yes, indeed. Actually, the number of bacteria per gram of filter material is the same as you will find in garden soil. You could also ask, is it so that there are only a few bacteria which are able to live under these conditions? And, well, we investigated five different waterworks, filter material from waterworks, as you can see here. And what you can see is that actually it is a very complex microbial community we found. You can also see that there are differences between the different waterworks. And you can certainly see that this light pale here is reflecting uh, one group of bacteria, the Nisospira, which actually is involved in the nitrification. And it was a surprise that it actually was so dominant that it actually was. So a lot of bacteria here. If we look at the process, the ammonia oxidation and the ammonia removal, then one way would be to look at how the concentration is developing down through the filter. And you can see that the concentration is being removed, the concentration is going down, and the ammonia is being removed in the top of the filter. And then you could ask, well, what about the lower part here? Is that a surplus capacity? Well, we investigated that. We took some filter material from the top, brought it into the laboratory, and uh, increased the load uh, for a short time uh, of the load of ammonia. And then we actually saw that, well, when we did that, we also increased the ammonia oxidation rate. So, yes, in the top there was an, uh, a potential for increasing the rate. But if we actually did the same investigation with the lower part, then you can see that when we increased the load, then there was no reflection of that in the activity, so there was no potential for further capacity in, in, in the lower part of the filter. What if we try to stimulate the filter in various other ways? We investigated that in a pilot column like this. Uh, we uh, increased the load for a longer period. Uh, we could actually see that while doing that, that the uh, concentration of bacteria, this is again a, a depth profile, we can see that concentration was increased from this range to, to this range here. Uh, but in the minute we added, added uh, phosphorus, then we could see that the rate was really going up, and we could also see that there got much more bacteria uh, in this case. So adding phosphorus could stimulate the filter. 
what if we actually took a, a, a bit more smart approach? What if we actually look at the processes? And we know that bacteria are involved. We know that enzymes are essential here. And if we actually look at one of the essential bacteria, uh, enzymes, the ammonium monooxygenase, then we actually know that copper is an essential metal in that construction of that enzyme. So what if we actually add copper to the filter? Could that be a way to stimulate the filters? We did that in a full-scale filter. We uh, were following the influent concentration over a period of time. You can see it was quite constant. You can also see that the effluent concentration here is lower, so there is a certain removal. Uh, it, the effluent concentration is also stable, but you can also see that not all the ammonia is removed. But when we added copper to this, and when I say added copper, we're talking about about one microgram of copper per liter, then we could see an immediate effect. We could see that within a week we had a substantial removal uh, and the effluent concentration was going down. And actually after three weeks, uh, the effluent concentration was down to below the detection limit and staying down there. If we look further into that process and look at what is going on in the filter, then one thing you can see is that uh, the concentration before we add the copper was decreasing all the way down through the filter. So it was not only in the top that this was uh, the removal was occurring, but you could also see that actually we had a breakthrough ammonia was coming out of the filter. And when we start to add the copper, the process was stimulated, but we also saw that it was moved upwards in the filter. Uh, so we actually moved it all the way up to that the main part was removed here and nothing was coming out through the filter. So dosing copper clearly had an effect. You may remember that we want to oxidize the ammonia to nitrite. We want to, and here we looked at the removal of ammonia, but we don't want to have an accumulation of the nitrite. The nitrite we need to have oxidized all the way to nitrate. And if we look at the nitrite concentration uh, down through the filter, uh, the nitrite here, uh, you can see that in the beginning when we start, or before we added uh, copper, you can see that actually nitrite are produced all the way down through the filter, but we also have a breakthrough, so nitrite is actually leaving the filter that we don't want. But when we actually had dosed copper for a period and moved up the process, we also moved up the ammonium, uh, sorry, the nitrite oxidation to the top part here, leaving enough time and space for uh, the removal of the nitrite completely, so we actually had nothing coming out of the filter. So my main message is, here is that the biological processes and microbial processes are essential in the treatment of drinking water from groundwater, not at least when we talk about removal of ammonia. We are really looking into which bacteria are involved, how uh, they are involved in the processes and how important they are, we are looking at the processes, how to control them, how to op optimize them. And one of the ways is to add uh, trace metals like copper. So we are making uh, water fit for purpose.